guys, remember, before we start, please use this information at your own discretion and realize that modifying your vehicle and using launch control and increasing the power and all these things that we talk about can result in premature failure, especially when not used responsibly. So please use at your own caution. So as some of you might've already heard, Cobb has released launch control for the 22 and up WRX. Now, not only did they give us launch control, but they also gave us flat foot shifting, which was almost as exciting a news as the launch control. This is really gonna open up a lot for the platform in terms of drag racing, and we're really excited about it. I wanted to talk to everybody about how launch control works and how you can utilize it on your 22 and up WRX as safely as possible. Many of you know that this transmission that's in the 22 and up WRX is based largely on the old five speed, and it isn't the strongest transmission offering that Subaru has. However, it still is a formidable option for someone who's wanting to make more power and still drive spiritedly. Let's talk a little bit about how launch control works so we can talk about how to keep your 22 and up WRX transmission safe if you're gonna be using launch control. So first off, what is launch control? You've heard of it. Many of you know how it works, some of you don't. It's a pretty straightforward system. Um, sometimes we see it on cars that don't have manual transmissions, but specifically in this car with a manual transmission, it's essentially allowing us to rev the engine up to a set RPM that you can define, which I'll show you how to do. And it allows the engine to build a little bit of boost and RPM so that when we're ready to launch the car, we can do so at a consistent RPM and we can do so in a controlled manner. Now, before launch control came out on this car, Drivers were forced to modulate the engine RPM with their right foot. And it still worked pretty effectively as you might've seen in some of our zero to 60 videos. But if we wanna optimize our launching, having a set RPM that we can stick to removes a variable. Instead of having to control the throttle pedal with our right foot, now we can just keep our right foot all the way to the floor and we can use our clutch pedal to essentially do everything that we want to do to tweak the launch. Now, I think the number one concern that people have with using launch control is whether or not they're going to break something while, while using it. And the key here to remember is how you use it will greatly, greatly impact the results that you get from using it. Dropping the clutch or dumping the clutch or sidestepping the clutch, which is releasing the clutch very rapidly, is a great way to break things. The key here that you wanna remember when you're using launch control is we wanna deliver power to the drive line somewhat gradually. If you do it instantaneously, you have a significant amount of RPM and torque on the flywheel, and then you're slamming that into the transmission, and it has like a jolting effect. Um, and, and what we're going for is we're gonna try and be a little bit gentler with it. Now, there's a pro and a con to this. The pro is that it's safer for the transmission, the axles, pretty much your entire drive line. But the con is that it is gonna wear your clutch out a little bit more. Premature clutch wear is going to be a byproduct of using the launch control a lot. Now, we don't have a number on it. We couldn't really say how many times you can do launch control on a stock clutch before it wears out. But just keep in mind that this is a component to launch control. It's a it's an assumed risk that you're gonna to have to take, and if you wanna launch your car, just understand that something is going to be wearing. And in the way that we recommend launching your car, we recommend doing that with the clutch. Um, clutches are a wear item anyway. It's kind of like a brake pad. So I would much rather you use the clutch as kind of the, the weak link, or if anybody's familiar with agricultural terms, like the shear pin on a tractor, which is a pin that breaks if there's too much torque applied to the power takeoff we kind of use the clutch for that as well. So we're gonna talk a little bit about driving technique and how to launch this car optimally and as safely as possible. So what are some things that we want to avoid when using launch control to make sure that we don't hurt anything? Well, the first thing is gonna be, like I said, dumping the clutch or sidestepping the clutch. Uh, what that could possibly do is break something inside the transmission or possibly an axle. So we're definitely gonna to try to avoid that. The other thing that can happen when you dump the clutch really hard is it can cause wheel spin and it can actually uh, also cause wheel hop. Wheel hop is a symptom that we see where the tire gains traction and then spins a little bit and then gains traction again. And as it kind of does this, it can start to create a hopping sensation. And when you're 
as I mentioned, like with dumping the clutch, when you're loading and unloading rapidly like that, that's typically when things can break. So we're gonna try to avoid that at all costs. So I know probably everybody is also wondering, is launch control safe? Is it safe to use? And safe is a subjective term. So as I mentioned earlier, it will definitely increase wear on some of your driveline components, but this is just my opinion, of course. I don't feel like it's a deal breaker. It's not like you launch the car three times and everything is destroyed. After tuning Subarus for the last 12 years, I think I can count on one hand how many times I've seen someone break a transmission. Um, don't get me wrong, it can happen. You go on forums and Facebook pages and it seems like you learn about all these issues, but people typically go to those pages to talk about an issue. How many people are going on there talking about how they haven't had any issues? You get a little bit of a confirmation bias there. But um, I think that if you follow the guidelines that I'm mentioning here, it's not going to exacerbate wear on your driveline components unless you're doing it really frequently. Launching the car here and there, really not a big concern. So I personally feel like it's safe, especially when you follow our guidelines. Uh, but like I said before, use it at your own discretion and just be prepared. Something could go wrong. Before we begin any demonstrations, let's also talk about flat foot shift. So I think launch control is probably a little more commonly understood, but I think that flat foot shift is a little less understood. Some people seem to think that it's bad for the car or bad for your driveline. And I would argue that it's actually a little bit safer for your driveline because of the way that it works. So how does it work? Well, flat foot shift is activated by your clutch pedal switch. If you have it enabled in your tune, what happens is when you're driving the car at full throttle for maximum performance and you go to shift the vehicle, when you press down on the clutch pedal, what happens is flat foot shift enables and it changes the engine RPM limit to the RPM that you set. Now, what RPM should we set it to? Well, typically what we look at is what RPM you're going to be at when you shift to the next gear after reaching red line in the gear before it. So think about a drag racing situation or just anytime you're winding the gears up. If I get to 6,500 RPM in second gear and then I immediately put it in third gear, the RPM in this car is gonna drop to about 4,800 RPM. So that's the RPM that I'm probably gonna set up my flat foot shift for. So what does this do? Why would we wanna set that RPM limit for, for that RPM? Well, it essentially takes the engine RPM to the perfect spot of where your engine RPM would be anyway when you grab the next gear. It does so in a way that's not violent and if you have it set right, perfectly matched. It puts way less stress on your synchronizers and the transmission because they aren't having to match the differentiation in speed as much because it's going right to the spot that it would need to. The other thing that it does is it reduces the shock of the engine being at the wrong RPM. If you maybe have noticed when you're driving a stick, if you take a really long time to shift and you don't rev match it, you can kind of get a lurching sensation when you put it into the next gear because the engine RPM is lower than the RPM that it should be at. Flat foot shift when set up properly puts the engine RPM at the perfect spot for the next shift. So what you'll find is even though it seems kind of counterintuitive to be like shifting at full throttle, it's actually a pretty smooth shift if it's set up correctly. I'm gonna show you that on the demonstration, but um, flat foot shift is wonderful because it allows you to really get the most performance out of your car um, without really sacrificing anything. Without flat foot shift, you know, we're shifting as fast as we can to try and keep the engine RPM up and the boost up and um, it kind of feels like you're forcing the car to do something. Flat foot shift is gonna feel a lot smoother and softer, and it's usually gonna result in a faster shift. So um, if you're still someone who enjoys a manual transmission like me, one of the downsides is that we're at a disadvantage for changing gears. Uh, it's really gonna be hard to beat a Porsche PDK shift time or really any dual clutch, but flat foot shift will allow you to be a little bit more competitive. So, um, really excited that they have that feature as well and i think you're going to find out that you like that feature after you have a chance to try it out now i want to go ahead and show you how everything works and give you an idea of how you're going to be able to utilize these features keep in mind uh, this car that we're using here 
is, is our own shop car. And this car does have a ETS J pipe on it, otherwise stock cat back. It has an ETS top mount intercooler on it. It may or may not have a prototype intake on it that we've been working on, perhaps. Um, so you might be hearing some different turbo noises and stuff. And it does have a E85 tune on it. So in case ever, anybody was wondering about the acceleration that they're seeing, that's the way the car is set up. Now, when you're ready to get your launch control set up, you're gonna go over to Tune, Adjustments, and you are easily gonna be able to adjust these settings. The flat foot shift, what I recommend on a bolt-on car like this, is 4,800 RPM. And the launch control that I recommend for a car like this, it's going to vary. We'll talk about it a little bit, but right now I have it at 4,100 RPM. So uh, we'll talk a little bit more about how that's going to vary, but um, just this mainly is to show you how to adjust the numbers. Flat foot shift, you could be pretty solid at 48. The launch RPM, definitely uh, keep in mind that you might want to adjust that. So before we start driving, let's see what launch control sounds like outside the car. Just a quick reminder that this video is sponsored by BCP Tuning. We offer professional remote tuning support around the world to a variety of vehicles through our simple to use process with unmatched customer service. Visit our website at bcpetuning.com or click the link in the video description for more info. Okay, so let's do a little demonstration here. Um, I just want to note that first gear traction can heavily depend on how your tune is set up and how much power you're making. So um, if you're at least working with me on tuning and you are planning on launching the car, you know, let's talk about that so I can make sure that it's optimized for you. I will admit that the tune on this car is a little spicy in first gear. So um, you may see a little bit of wheel spin here. So let's go ahead and uh, Find a spot where we can do a little bit of a test here. And right now I've got the launch control set to 3,800. So I wanna point out that starting lower is much better than starting higher. I'd much rather you just bog the car a little bit than spin really bad or smoke your clutch or something like that. So always start lower. Maybe even 3,300 is a good starting point just to get a feel for it. Now the key here is to remember that when you launch the car like this, we're mainly using the clutch to control the way that the car launches. So, um, like I said earlier in the video, in the past, we're modulating the gas and the clutch, but the nice part about launch control is you can pretty much just keep your foot down on the gas and modulate um, with the clutch pedal. We will do a 3,800 RPM launch. And after we launch it, we'll use the flat foot shift feature as well, and you can see how smooth it is. So we're gonna stay on launch control for a second, let the car build a little bit of boost, and then watch what I do with my feet. That was pretty good. Hopefully you can see in the video of my feet that I let the clutch out a little bit and I let the suspension of the car load up and I let the car start moving before I fully release it. It's kind of this perfect balance of harmony where you're keeping the turbo spooled up and you are um, 
allowing the suspension to load and you're allowing the car to get a little bit of movement and once we start moving it's much safer to fully engage the clutch at this point uh, if you're doing this properly the clutch shouldn't feel like it's slipping it should still feel like it has plenty of bite um, if for some reason it doesn't or you're smelling a burning sensation or a burning smell like an organic burning smell which is kind of a just a yucky smell because a lot of clutches are organic um, stop stop doing it and you know reassess the situation uh, in a minute here we'll do another one and um, you know just for just for verification purposes how's that I uh, should probably mention two things or three things actually uh, one make sure your traction control is off for this you want your traction control to be off because you don't want it to intervene if you have a little bit of wheel spin um, the other two things is how do you know if it was a good launch well you can use a draggy performance meter you can see what your zero to 60 times would look like um, which I would like to have here but I've got a lot of devices hooked up uh, but if you're bogging then the car is going to kind of fall on its face and by that i mean the rpm is going to drop the acceleration isn't going to feel very good um, and then in the opposite direction if maybe you're using too much rpm so that the first case i gave you there was not enough if you're using too much rpm you're going to experience some wheel spin and wheel spin isn't you know in itself bad but as i mentioned you can run into issues with wheel hop wheel hop is very bad so we want to avoid wheel hop at all costs okay so remember just to reiterate we want to slip the clutch just a little bit to get the car moving not too much though See how smooth those shifts are? Those shifts are very smooth. Flat foot shift is incredible. Now I'd, I'd show you what it looks like without the flat foot shift, but I'd rather not because it's just so smooth with it. Um, probably know what it's like shifting fast without it but with it on man it's just buttery all right so that was it uh, there's your demonstration of both flat foot shift and launch control. I know I mainly focused on the launch control with my explanation, but as you probably saw in the video, the key with flat foot shift, you can just keep your foot flat. See how that works? Uh, keep your foot flat on the gas and then just shift with the clutch like you normally would. It's very smooth. I want to just reiterate and remind everybody that the key here is to use the clutch as the safety margin. If I was to drop that clutch in an instant versus what you saw me do where I kind of lifted up a little bit and then did the second half afterward, if you drop it in an instant, that's when you're going to hurt stuff. But launching it the way that I did is, is one of the safest ways to launch this car. Now, I know many of you are wondering, how do I get this? Well, if you buy a tune from us, you're going to be able to get this on any new tune order um, as of May 24th. Thanks a lot for watching. Uh, really hope that this was helpful. If you are interested in a tune from us, of course, you can find a link in the description. BCP Tuning, been tuning Subarus for over 12 years, Cobb Pro Tuner. We've got a shop, dyno, all that stuff, but we, we work with a lot of people outside of our shop with our e-tuning services. Um, and if you have any questions or comments, certainly you know throw them in the comments. I really appreciate you guys watching, hope it helped and have a great day drive safe and be smart all right talk to you guys soon see ya